Okay, so I'm going to the, the section four, and this is what I call the multi-scale order structures in semi-crystalline polymers. And this one is co uh, spanning through the multiple pages, and this will be the really the heart of the semi-crystalline polymer in terms of structural understanding. And so uh, chapter actually 17.2 in your text is dealing about the chain packing and alignment. And so this is what they call the crystal structures. The chains are packed, uh, and they, they, they can form this, you know, crystal uh, domain size of A and B, and then those uh, lattice size structures. And if you from look at the from the side, uh, there will be a C. And so these are the structures that depending on how chains are folded and how atoms are essentially has its own position. And then once you have these chains and then the forming the lamellas, they form this uh, chain crystal. These structures, are we, we have a better understanding by isolating the single crystal from solution-grown sample. And then, then we have a better understanding about their chain folding model with how the ends are loose and, and so on. And uh, but as you go on, and uh, the more realistic uh, picture that people are interested in is, how do you what, what is the structure of the polymer in a bulk? Okay, when you melt it and when you crystallize, uh, what's the structure of the of, of those? So these lamella structures, right? These are lamella structures, as you shown here, is actually they are kind of. Uh, uh, there is a, what they call the tie molecule that cross uh, between the lamella structures, and uh, so these are multi-layer structures. And when you have a lot of melted structures, actually this melted structure eventually, what they form the spherulite. And this is a term that they they use, and you have to be uh, used to these uh, languages. It's coming from the uh, crystallite in a spherical uh, three-dimensional structures. They call it spherulite. There's a lot of uh, kind of understanding, uh, people trying to have a better understanding here. In, uh, so in here, I think that before I go into the details, the molecular levels of understanding, we are talking about some angstrom, a few angstrom, let's say five angstrom scale, uh, well, a few angstrom scale of those. And the lamella thicknesses, we are talking about about, let's say, uh, 100, uh, 100 angstroms, right? 10 nanometers. So it's very, very thin layers. Eventually, those small, th uh, thin layers of uh, chain-packed lamella crystal domains, along with the amorphous domains, they eventually uh, form in the spherulite. Their diameter is about 100 micrometer. And if you think about how 100 mi micrometer, is this is a 10 to the fourth nanometer, or 10 to the fifth angstroms, right? So. It's like a different orders of magnitude of the sizes we're going to go. So that's what I call the level one and the level two and level three that I'm going to go through uh, in, in short details. Just before the, going to the different section of the, of the one, as an overview, I would like to show, uh, give you a little reminder. This is what I'm talking about in a different angle. So let me, let me show you the... Uh, pictures in a different way. So when you have a polymer film, just as a polypropylene film, a polyethylene film, just like a grocery bags, and this one, when you take it out, and if you're looking under the microscope, you will see that big spherulite in the size scale about you know 10 micron, 100 micron, or even bigger, depending on the, your crystallization structures. And within this uh, big scale, if uh, they are consist of the uh, lamella crystals, and it, this is a, what sometimes they call it the lamella ribbon, because they are kind of the twisted in a way to make up the effect we fill out the uh, surfaces, sur uh, spaces in three dimensions. And the, within the lamella uh, structures, as you can see that, okay, what are the thicknesses of this lamella that is in, in the range of 100 or 10 nanometers to a multiples of 10 nanometers? And then within this, the chain packing that going through these lamellas, you can see, you can define the CH2, CH2. Here's an example of polyethylene, actually, going the zigzag, uh, CH2 motions. And if you go to the top view of the zigzag, and this is a zigzag motion, 
Okay, so there's a zigzag of CH carbon carbon going back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And then uh, what they call the herringbone pattern, the perpendicular to that, there is another CH2 uh, chains are going back and forth, filling it up. So this is how they fill up the spaces. And then the distance between the first one is called A. This is an A. And the distance between this is called a B. Okay. And then if you look at from the side, right, if you, and that's a, the, from, this is actually the not top view from the, this is a side view, three-dimensional side view. And you will also see that the st staggering the distance between these two. So that will be the C. So as you can see, this, this is an A, this is a B which is from the top that you see, and the, this is uh, happened to be the C, which is along the what is called the, the Z-axis. Naturally, the, the chain uh, orientation, the main axis, they call it the Z-direction. That's a unicell size of the C. Okay. So starting from the how small they are, they can form lamellas, and the lamella can, can stack themselves to each other, and they eventually they form the spherulite. And then I'm going to talk to you about, about the molecular level chain, uh, chain in the next section.